Hey everyone, this is Dan Bell, and welcome to the cutting room floor. I know it's been a long time since I have put one of these out, but uh, on this episode I'm going to be doing a commentary for the Leakin Park Scariest Place in America featurette that I put out, and uh, I'm going to be giving some follow-ups to things we saw in the video. And I'm also going to include a bunch of bonus footage that wasn't included in the uh, in the final cut. Um, I have uh, been interested in doing something like this for a while, and I uh, got interested in Leakin Park. Leakin Park is not a place that a lot of people in Baltimore want to go to. It just, it's a, it had, the park has a a very notorious reputation and it's referred to as Baltimore's open air cemetery. And as I started to research, um, the park, I basically came across the story of, uh, Reginald Vernon Oates, who at the time, back in 1968, um, and this is an 18 year old kid, by the way, 18 year old kid who murdered four young kids that were in his neighborhood, um, Stokes drive over, uh, in West Baltimore. Uh, he was called the hatchet man, or at least that's what, I don't know if it was in the press. Um, if they called him the hatchet man, but in the neighborhood, the kids referred to him as hatchet man. And, um, he was, a you know, basically a serial killer. Uh, when I found that story, I was really, really taken by it because it was so grisly and so horrific. Uh, and I thought this would really make an interesting documentary because not many people actually have heard about it. And so I started to think, you know, could I, uh, could I contact and, and get, interview people who were involved with that uh, particular case. You know, could I talk to victims' families? Could I talk to police detectives? Um, So on and so forth. So we started to look for people on Facebook uh, that were involved in the case. So we were looking for names, anything we could find, and we found a few, um, but nobody was willing to do an interview. So that was the first roadblock, uh, for the project. Cause basically I was going to make a feature about that particular case. Um, and I'm like, well, if nobody's going to talk, I can't really, you know, it would be like half an hour long or, you know, 45 minutes long or whatever I could get out of it. And I also wanted to interview Oates who is in prison, uh, or who's in, um, not prison, but he's in a, a mental, uh, health facility, um, for people who, you know, criminals. And I was like, you know, I wonder if I could interview him, which would be pretty creepy by the way. But, um, I felt that it would be, you know, something to look at, um, that would be, I don't know, just sort of a dark history kind of thing. Um, so I I uh I hit a bunch of roadblocks. And me, I'm always like I want to get started. So <laughs> so I just started going to the park uh at all hours of the day and night and just shooting footage. And I didn't really know where I was going with any of the footage, but sometimes if you just shoot a bunch of stuff and then you kind of start playing with it, in editing, editing it and cutting it, you can come up with something. And so that's sort of the culmination of what this feature is about. Um, I took the more, the angle of having it be a little more like a horror movie than an actual, uh, you know, like narrative documentary. This is more like, uh, just sort of a real life kind of thing. Um, I took Rick out to the park, uh, this day 
And, you know, we are in the woods and we're walking around and Rick brought his uh, recorder to do um, EVPs, the electronic voice phenomenon, <laughs> which I think is total horseshit, but <laughs> whatever floats Rick, Rick's boat, uh, you know, I, I don't mind. And it's funny for... You know, I just thought, I, I thought when we were out here, we would, I, I didn't even feel like shooting, to be honest with you. I just wanted to hang out with Rick. And I brought the camera and then sort of all hell broke loose. And uh, it was great. Um, not great for community standards, but great for uh, an action-packed sort of sequence. And... Uh, so, you know, I had this this uh, scenario happen. And then I thought, well, now I can start kind of cutting something. Now, Will also went with me to Legan Park. And after we went, I remember we... So something very strange happened. And it happened also again. Uh, and, and it's in this video. Uh, the, the part where I... Uh, I'm on the 4,500 block of, uh, Weatheridsville road, which is now closed off, but they call it the Dickeyville trail now, but I went there at night and there was what, from what I heard, it sounded like there were people talking up in the woods. And I don't know if it was a play on, you know, like sound bouncing off or traveling through the night or whatever from another neighborhood or, or what it was, but it was very creepy. And Will and I experienced the same thing when we were there, only it sounded like, I mean, I know this sounds insane, but it sounded like a woman like moaning or wailing, uh, down near the river, um, and we just sort of stopped in our tracks, and then I said, let's go back to the car. <laughs> and Will said when we got in the car, he's like, I'm not coming back here. Don't ask me to come back here. I'm not doing it. And I said, okay. So there was that, uh, you know, kind of weird, kind of creepy thing. I always think of natural uh ways that it could happen like voices traveling from a neighborhood maybe bouncing off um this little valley that the Gwyn Falls runs through um so who knows but do I would I point to it being like paranormal now I wouldn't but it's just the creepiness of it you know you're out there on that old abandoned road and the trees are all hanging down and there's ivy hanging down and you're just like, man, this is really creepy. And so it just kind of matched the scenery. And I was like, I've seen enough for this. So, so we left and, uh, I took Rick out here and I took my other friend Brooke out here. And so I had these moments with having a person with me, but then I was like, you know what? After this Rick incident, with this scenario that's happening now, I said to myself, I said, you know what, um, I need to pepper this with some other clips, but I, I need to be by myself. I'm like, that's really going to add the impact of having people sort of, you know, get creeped out and really put themselves in my shoes kind of situation. And so that's what I did. Uh, started to, uh, go to the park in the dark and walk into the park alone, um, which was terrifying. I, I will, uh, I will admit that it was pretty scary, but when I came out, especially after finding the cat, um, the dead cat inside of the bag, uh, that was you know, that was like when I was like, okay, you have enough here now. We can put this together because the cat in the bag was so, it was so disturbing. I mean, it was just like uh, really disturbing. But uh, someone contacted me and they live over in Fairmount, 
Park, which is the neighborhood that is on Weatheridsville. And, um, or not Weatheridsville, I'm sorry, Winterbourne. Um, Winterbourne Road. And it's a beautiful neighborhood. It's quiet, uh, beautiful, and... But the road there has been used to dump bodies. But other than that, it's a beautiful neighborhood. Uh, the houses are beautiful. They're like old sort of arts and crafts style houses. And they're just, it's its lovely. Uh, oh, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Let me turn my phone off. So um, a lady over there contacted me. And she said, we find uh, anim- bags with animals in them all the time. P- she's like, a truck comes down and will drop one or two of them off. And they, she thinks that it is a place that cremates animals that's not doing their job. So they're just tossing them out on the road. Which does make sense because she said all the bags are the same. They're very thick uh, like almost like garden bags or, you know, like a very thick, heavy plastic bag. Um, so that's a little bit creepy, but, uh, at least with her explanation, at least I, you know, stopped thinking about, oh, did someone actually put the cat in that bag when it was still alive? Um, you know, that would have been something that, uh, really would have been horrific, uh, for me to, um, think about it. I just didn't, because I love animals so much and I just, I just can't imagine like doing that to one of my own pets. Like it just, it's horrifying. So, but anyway, um, another, let me think of what else. Uh, oh, so another lady that I spoke to, and this, by the way, you know, I, I if I saw somebody on the side of the road, like walking or whatever, I would always stop and try to talk to them and to see if they would talk to me on camera. Very few people did. I had a, I have a few interviews. Um, it's surprising, though, that two of the interviews I did, the people had no idea about the park. None. Um no idea about its history, nothing. They're just completely oblivious to, to all the the stuff that's happened here, which I guess is a good thing. I guess if I didn't know about the stuff that had happened in the park, that I would be more inclined to go and hang out in it. But, uh, um, you know, I was uh, this, this, oh, so here's my point. There's one lady who I spoke to on, uh, whether Uh, Her and her husband were walking their dog, and I I just stopped and was talking to them. And they told me about this man um, who is actually the, um, uh, he is the person who found Heyman Lee from the uh, Serial podcast. And she told me that he's still around. And they call him the Naked Man. And he is a nudist who goes into Leakin Park and walks around naked. And he also walks around the roads uh, in Dickeyville and out on Windsor Mill and stuff like that nude as well. And uh, I just was like, this lady said she didn't believe that... uh, uh, Adnan Saeed, I think his name is Adnan Saeed, uh, the, the, the person who was convicted of, um, murdering Heyman Lee. She doesn't think he did it. She thinks that this naked man, uh, killed her, um, which, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I really don't want to get into the, the kind of the discussion, the serial discussion. I've listened to it. Uh, I've listened to the four, first five episodes and so far, I'm not that riveted, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I find it kind of boring. Um, I just, I don't know. I know a lot of people love cereal and everything. I'm just, I don't know. I I, pr- I prefer Cheerios, to be honest with you. <laughs> 
Uh, but I mean, whatever. It's a, I like visual stuff and, and, and kind of seeing what, uh, people are, you know, or seeing what, seeing the places people are talking about. I think serial would have been better as a documentary than a radio show or a podcast. That's just me. But, uh, anyway, uh, we talked for a while and I said, you know, could we do an interview? And she said, uh, she's like, I really don't want to. I said, oh, that's fine. That's one of my problems is that I talk to people and then I'm try to as we're in the middle of a discussion, I'm like, oh, could I ask you some questions on camera? And they're like, well, you know, today's not a good day. Or could you call me? And you call them and they never answer. Or they don't call you back. <laughs> That's just how it happens. Um, so a little bit, uh, let me talk about this real quick. These bones here that I found up in the woods. Now, I was at this spot and when I... When I went past the barricades, I started smelling this really wretched odor of uh, decay. So something had died, um, or some it was probably an animal somewhere. Maybe it got hit by a car, and then crawled up in the woods and and, and you know expired. Um, so when I got up and I was trying to find this whatever where the smell was coming from, and I looked up into this little hollow here woods or whatever and uh you know walked up and then saw these bones and i was really disturbed to be honest with you because there was a boot there and there were bones just sort of scattered about everywhere and i was you know just taken aback to be honest with you uh, especially with these right here. I just thought those really do look like big, you know, they're like big bones. Like what, what, where did they come from? So the video went live and, uh, of course someone contacted me who claimed to be a physician. Now I only had the person's first name, so I didn't know if it was actually a physician or not. And so many people said, oh, these are human bones, you have to call the police, you have to do this. So, um, by Sunday or Friday, wait a minute, Saturday, it was either Saturday or Sunday. I told Rick, I said, I need to go up to Leakin Park because if someone sees a video and then they get the urge to go and collect these bones, you know, I, I, I rather we do it, um, and see what we, you know, get them verify what they are. So Rick and I went up and I'll include the footage of us collecting these bones. We went up and collected them and put them in a Ziploc freezer bag. And they were just covered with ants. There were ants like living inside of the bones. So, um, ants were just filling the bag up and I'm like, thankfully it's Ziploc so they can't get in the car. Uh, and we collected them all and we walked through the woods a little bit to see if we could find more, which we did. And, um, we, I went back to my uh, um, building that I live at, and one of my neighbors is a, a friend of mine, and he's also a physician at Johns Hopkins. And as soon as I, I was like, I'm going to go get my friend and have him look at these. And then as soon as I got home, uh, I go in the garage, and I'm going into the where the elevators are, and there he is. And I'm like, how is this possible? Uh, <laughs> like, I just needed to talk to him, and he's right there. Uh, so so I said, you know, could you come to my car? He was with his wife and their baby. And we're in the elevator, and I, I said, listen, I, I got something in the car I need you to take a look at. <laughs> and his wife was like, "What? well, what? They're both like, what are, you, what are you talking about? And I said, I said, I got some bones that I need you <laughs> to do if you could identify them for me, uh, or verify that they're not human that, and his wife looked at me like I had grown a unicorn horn out of my forehead. I mean, she was like horrified and, uh, they're trying to ask me, they're like, where did you find these? What are you talking about? And I, I explained, you know, I did a featurette and 
You know, people are saying that they're bones that could be human. So we went and collected the bones to, you know, make sure that they're safe. So nobody who saw the video, you know, went up there to get them themselves. So, uh, he said, okay. So we went to his apartment he grabbed some gloves and, uh, we went down to my car and I pulled the bag out and I was really nervous because I'm like, please don't say these are human. <laughs> like if they're human, I'm, you know, I'd have to call the police. I'd have to go back there, uh, with the bones, tell them where we found them. And I'm sure they would start a search to, to find out where the rest of, uh, the poor human being who ended up, you know, uh, buried or dumped out here. So he looked at him and within 10 seconds, he's like, they're not human. I said, Oh, thank God. I said, I'm so happy. <laughs> So it was a big relief uh, to find out that the bones were not human. And um, and it was so quick because I ran into him and we, you know, he's always working. Uh, Hopkins doctors like never have time off, but he was just happened to be out for the evening and, and uh, it was perfect timing. So, uh, so yeah, so that, that end ended that mystery um, and I got to say, when I saw this from like 15 feet away, I thought, God, it looks like a skull, but it ended up just being like a ball of some fungus or, or mushrooms or something. I don't know what it is. It's disgusting. It looks like a, an alien pod almost. One of the, uh, one of the, the, the most troubling and upsetting cases uh, from this park for me that personally um, had me pause for a moment and just say that's absolutely tragic um, was this the case the Lemuel Wallace case uh, I don't really want to talk about it because it's just you can go read about it but Lemuel Wallace is uh, was a uh, deaf blind uh, m- a mentally disabled man who was murdered at the uh, Winans Meadow um, bathroom, and the 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 specifics of that case are just horrible. The worst thing I've ever read. Um, and I always think about it. I, I just, especially while doing this, I'm always just always thinking about it, just thinking about how horrible it was. But uh, you can look it up. Um, Lemuel Wallace, L-E-M-U-E-L, Wallace, W-A-L-L-A-C-E. Look him up and and, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. Just horrible, horrible, low life, horrible stuff. Um, Never have I heard of anything that that hideous before, but uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, so is there going to be a sequel or a, a running kind of, uh, theories with this particular thing? I don't know. I, I highly doubt it, but you never know. Um, you know, it, this is something that is, you know, that we, I could elaborate. I mean, we could go through every single, um, incident that happened in this park and try to find locations. And that, that's another thing about the cases in this park. Very hard to figure out exact locations. Um, even in the police reports, like it's never really clear, um, where, um, bodies were found. It's always like kind of approximate. Uh, and another thing, um, about this, uh, well with the Heyman Lee case from serial, uh, they had, they knew exactly, you know, they were able to find the exact spot where she was. And it's kind of depressing because the, uh, what did they call it? The 40 foot log, 
um, where they found her, there's a depression there where she was, and it's still there, and it's just so, ugh, so creepy. And the whole little, the woods there where they found her just stinks like sewage uh, because of the overflow of sewage that leaks into the, or runs into the uh, Gwyn Falls in Dead Run every day. Uh, It just stinks so bad. I don't know why that hasn't been fixed. I mean, there's got to be some environmental, you know, protection. uh, And, you know, you would assume that that problem would be rectified. But you you can't even put your foot in the water in this place. I mean, if you do, you you have to, like, wash with soap and water because it's so polluted. Uh, The river's so polluted. It's just just a frothing... um, collection of of sewage it's it's absolutely disgusting um so that's the Gwyn falls for you. the Gwyn falls uh this little storm that happened here what i actually didn't shoot this after leaving whether it's Ville road i shot this on a different night but it's funny because i went out to shoot on Weatheredsville Road by myself. And when I got there, it started pouring down rain. Of course. So, <laughs> so oh, there's, there's Lemuel Wallace right there. Poor soul. Um, so, and I want to mention um, The Bodies of Leakin Park, which is a great blog by a person named Cam Green. I think that's the name, C-H-A-M, Green. Uh, Very good blog. If you want to go read that, uh, just Google the bodies of Leakin Park. Um, It provided me with a lot of information that would have been a lot of work to find. So I don't know if Cam is a male or female, but uh, they did a great job on, on finding all this information and it was a big help uh, working on this this project, uh, being able to access that uh, information. And also, I want to say the music um, for this project was just perfect. Uh, I, you know, it, these are the two composers that I worked with: Ivan Colombo and and Tees Pronk, uh, both. I've worked with before, uh, Tease, I think was, we did the Mothman, um, videos together and Ivan Colombo, uh, I can't, I cannot remember where, which video we did together. We had done a video together at some point. I think he contacted me and said, you know, he's does composes music. And so I just told them both, I said, you know, please send me stuff. Just, you know, I just want to kind of get, and I'm trying to explain to them like what I'm doing and, you know, what I'm looking for. And I'm like slow, otherworldly, creepy, you know, all that kind of stuff. And and they both delivered because the stuff that, the pieces that uh, were done were just fantastic. And uh, so the music really added a, a whole other element to this project. Um, I mean, it just sounded perfect and just added the right mood to what I needed. Um, so it was great. Now here's the, the bag. Uh, I was going down Winterborne as I was doing for like a couple weeks, I would go when I could get it up there and, and drive down Winterborne to see what people have been dumping. And I drove down and saw this one bag sitting there. And obviously judging by the grass and stuff underneath, it hadn't been there that long. I doubt that bag was there for more than 24 hours. Um, maybe even 12 hours, uh, so when I started nudging the bag, immediately sort of my blood went cold kind of thing because it didn't feel like trash. It felt like something like organic or, or you know, like a a body of some kind was in the bag. 
so my immediate thought was, okay, it's an animal. But then I'm like, but what if it isn't? And that kept going through my mind. Like, what if it isn't an animal? Uh, this is not the first time I've, I've found a bag with a dead animal in it. Um, I found a bag with a dead animal in it back in, I can't remember when it was. It was like maybe 1996, maybe, or 95. My friends and I went to Fells Point, and at that time, if you drove all the way to the end of Thames Street, it was just a field. Now it's all buildings and fancy and uh, ritzy. But back then, it was just like a, a field with like trash in it. And we went to Fells Point, and then we got back to the car, and someone had broken into the car and stolen all of our stuff. But then we walked around and started finding some of our stuff. Like, I had a bag with a bunch of uh, DVDs in it. Or no, maybe it was VHS. I can't remember if it was DVD or VHS. But I remember I had... E- I had a copy of Basic Instinct, <laughs> and I found it next to this field. Uh, and I said, "Well, I wonder if more of our stuff is around here." So we started kind of walking around searching for stuff, and there was a a bag. And I looked down, and we had a, a flashlight that uh, my friend had in her trunk. And I shined it down, and there was a dog. Just somebody had ripped the bag open, but there was a dog laying in the bag. I thought, oh, my God. Uh, so I was I was quite nervous when this happened. And I had just mustered up the courage to say, I'm going to my car. I'm going to grab something to, to cut this bag open, and I'm going to look and see what it is. And as soon as I turned around to do that, this police officer is coming up the lane. So I said, perfect. He can help me do, he can open it. (laughs) And I assumed that he, you know, he just wanted to get out of there and I completely understand his point of view, but I felt like this bag needed to be looked at just in case. So he had a knife, he he cut it open, and uh, of course we look inside, and it's a, a deceased uh, cat, um, which is it's horrible. Um, but it, uh, it just kind of reiterated my feelings about Leakin Park and how creepy it is, and, and how I, you know... Because I look at this stuff now, I I always kind of I look at the the footage afterward, and I'm thinking to myself, I can't believe that's me. Like I can't believe I did that. I went out and I filmed this, and I'm always like, I'm like, you have real like, like what do you have nerves of steel? But I'm like, no, I don't have nerves of steel. <laughs> I'm like a total wimp, uh, and I'm terrified when I'm doing this stuff. But uh, for some reason. I, I'm muster up the courage to do it. Um, I like that shot there, the cop car driving away. I would have lingered on that longer, but a car came up behind me. So I had to move out of the way and cut it in a different, I had to cut it. So we didn't see the, the other car, but, uh, so Winterborn, um, this street too is like, it's one of the last streets in the park that you could have enough privacy to do illegal activity. Although they've put trail cams on the trees in this section of the park. Uh, the city installed trail cams to try to catch illegal dumpers. Uh, but probably also just to keep an eye on vehicles that go up and down the road in case they do find something, you know, they might be able to pin it on a, specific vehicle um i don't know this shot here was a nightmare trying to get fyi it looks great but it took me like three tries to get it perfect um and i did this with no monitor which i don't know how the hell i was able to judge the focus and 
the levels and everything on a little tiny screen, but I was able to do it. Anyway, you guys, I really appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoy my work, please support me on Patreon. Uh, it's patreon.com slash this is Dan Bell, or you can do a one-time donation at paypal.me slash this is Dan Bell. And stay tuned for the bonus footage. There's plenty of it. And uh, I thank you all very much for watching. You ready to do this? Yeah. Let's get it over with. Alright, we need to get the light out of the back. There's a light in there somewhere. Oh. Yeah, keep going up that way. This way. Yeah, I see something. There's one. So you have something? Did you bring the ba the plastic bag? I left it in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Just grab the bones. Huh. Let me, here, let me see the light. I don't know. I don't know what to think about those. There's a, a more of them over here. Here, take this. What? Spider web. Oh. <laughs> my head now. Holy shit. This is like the hip. Oh my gosh. I don't know about these. Are those broken bits? Yeah. Man, we should have that bag with us. Let me go get the bag. All right. Okay. Okay. Right, so, so I'm going to put what we got so far. But okay. then they're right here is a whole bunch more. Oh, man. It's a rib. Were there more broken bits over here? Where were they? Yeah, look down there. There's still. Hmm. Here, take this. Just set those bones down and we'll we'll I wanna check around here a little bit. Just to see if uh So which way? I don't know. You just go look around. Do you see anything? Can I have your flashlight? That's a starter phone. I mean, there's got to be more. I would assume.
see anything? No. Okay. 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 So, so I'm going to put what we got so far. But okay. then we're right here is a whole bunch more. Oh, man. a rib. Were there more broken bits over here? Where were they? Yeah, look down there. There's still... Hmm. Here, take this. Just set those bones down and we'll... we'll I want to check around here a little bit. Just to see if... Uh, so which way? I don't know. J just go look around. Do you see anything? Can I have your flashlight? That's a styrofoam. I mean, there's got to be more. I would assume. See anything? It's like a bunch of garbage. But that one area had a lot of bone. But I think it's animal. Might be. What is your like opinions of the park? Is your first time here? Like, yeah. what do you? Is it? I mean, do you? Did you have fun walking around? Did you? Um, like, what is your impression of the park? Mm -hmm. Well, it was a really nice getaway from the city, which is what I was looking for. To kind of be able to hear the like the crickets and the birds instead of just the cars is what I'm looking for. But somewhere close to the city, so. I'm trying this out and it was really nice and I walked by the ruins of the fort and it was really interesting to kind of connect myself to a little bit more of Baltimore history and kind of like the old timey history not just the new age uh, you know um, history um, so it was very beautiful and it was very secluded and nice and yeah it was a lovely walk do you feel safe when you're walking around here by yourself um, I mean, I'm always a little bit paranoid, and I definitely, like, thought about it, but I felt comfortable for the most part. Okay. All right, good. All yeah. right, that's all I needed. Okay. 
It might be coming from there, this stink. Oh, it smells horrible. Where is it? doesn't smell here. All right, I'll come back up in the daytime and look. See if I see anything. But uh, I want to get out of here. Is that a... What's that brown thing? See what I'm talking about? Oh shit. Off the road. People are crazy. What are they doing? Huh? What? Making a movie? Yeah, we're doing a documentary. Do you live here in this... In this? Yeah, you trying to turn it the other way? Sorry. Nice light now. You live here in this neighborhood? Yeah. It's a documentary, all the fucking dumping, the yeah. bodies, the ATMs, yeah, yeah, yeah. what is it? Yeah. That's what we're doing a documentary on. About once a week you can find an ATM, about once a month body, uh, every day, trash. Uh, probably once a week I gotta move shit out of the way just when I leave for work in the morning. Uh, really? It'd be like a fucking pile of tires, fucking 10 feet tall, in the middle yeah. of the street or something, you know? When's the last time can you remember they found a body out here? Bodies, I, I honestly, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it all it's hard to tell with the news unless you like go online and look because Leakin Park is what they just call all this shit. Yeah, right. So whether they find them over on Franklin Town Road right. or Dickieville or right. any of that, yeah. it just says Leakin Park. Uh, our biggest problem is just the illegal dumping and, and the ATMs. I mean, there's an ATM at the bottom of this at least at least twice a month. Yeah. ATM machine. Yeah. Like a machine. The whole machine. <laughs> I guess they take them and then they can't get into them, so they don't know what the fuck to do with them. So right. they're always still, you know, you can't get into one, man. By the time, whatever you use to get into one, you're gonna burn up the money inside. Right. Actually, you know, a torch or something, something that would actually get in. Right. So yeah, you see them all banged up and crashed into and hammer marks, but they're still sealed, you know? Right. But yeah, I mean, they're bold enough. The dude was uh, actually one morning, he was pushing it down the street in a shopping cart due to the ATM, you know what I mean? It's nonsense. Uh, my best thing for this road is the fucking, and you got people coming the wrong way up the one yeah, way all right. the time and yeah. shit. My sister used to work crime scene investigation here in Baltimore City. And just, the, uh, the just problem tell with them, the problem with them was when they would look for, like, like if they had a, uh, uh, somebody told them that there was a body or something seen, or they had a suspicion that it was in a certain area, um, every call that she would go out on, they actually never found the body they were looking for, mm -hmm. but they would call off the search because they were just fucking racking up numbers. Unbelievable. So they'd be looking for Jane Doe and they run across 17 other Jane Smiths and Jane, you know, uh, you know, just random other people before, never even found Jane Doe, but they'd say, oh God, stop now. We're just fucking racking up numbers and we don't need any more numbers in Baltimore City, you know? Yeah. So of course, yeah, we want to solve this, but we don't want to open 17 other cases that we have no chance of fucking solving. Right. So yeah, every time she would come down anywhere in Leakin Park or down here or over on the other side or on the other side of the water, they never actually found what they were looking for, but they found shit. Yeah.
getting late for that. Yeah. Put all the trash. So much garbage. It's like a comforter. Clothing. Yeah. I'm gonna go look. Some pretty wild clothing. Hmm? Might have had the bed bugs. Yeah, you're probably right. God damn, look at all this garbage, Rick. Tons of garbage. 